So I'm going to talk about some of the surgical procedure where uh, we have advanced in neuro monitoring procedures. So we, what we want to do is uh, doing the neuro monitoring outside the box. So the learning objective for this presentation is to identify the utilization of the neuro monitoring in various surgical procedures, identify the neural structure at risk during these surgical procedures, understand the neuro monitoring benefit for non-traditional procedures, and also understand the benefit of neuro monitoring in non-routine procedures. So we'll start with the shoulder surgery. So the first one I'm going to talk about shoulder surgery. So this is a typical shoulder joint, which is a ball and socket joint. And we can see we have humerus, which has a uh, head of the humerus, which has a um, articular surface with a scapula and make a joint. So in some conditions, there's a degenerative disease or a different type of pathology that will cause friction or pain in the structure. And that, or there's a ligament tear, so that has to be repaired. So this is one of the paper we published recently, multimodality intraoperative monitoring uh, during shoulder surgeries. So I'm, I'm, there are many applications in different types of surgical procedures. So today I'm just focusing on the reverse total shoulder uh, because that's a different technique. The patient present with um, weakened or absent rotator cuff muscles. Uh, procedure is to replace the ball and socket joint in the humerus. Uh, and it is done by swapping the joint. So instead of ball on humerus, ball is placed on the uh, scapula. The need for rotator cuff recruitment is minimized. The biggest risk of this procedure is traction on the radial nerve uh, and also a brachial plexus because the other nerves are at risk. So the SSCP we did on these cases were ulnar nerve SSCP, radial nerve SSCP, and posterior tibial nerve SSCP as well as median nerve SSCP. Um, so the posterior tibial nerve was done as a control. The EMG was done for the three heads of deltoid, uh, pectoralis muscle, biceps brachii, triceps brachii, flexor carpi radialis, abductor pollicis brevis, and first dorsal introsus. We also did transcranial motor repo potential, triggered EMG, and train of four uh, continuously to monitor the level of the muscle accent. So in these surgical procedures, the patient is placed in a beach uh, chair position. So patient is kind of sitting position uh, and it's um, placed on the table. So the convention on the left side, you can see the conventional method uh, when the there's a total shoulder replacement, uh, the, the ball part of the humerus is removed and replaced with the metallic part and the scapular part, that's a metal part is placed on the scapula. So it creates that joint. In the reverse procedure, the ball part is uh, attached to the scapula and the socket is attached to the humerus. So on the left side is the conventional shoulder replacement and on the right side is the reverse shoulder replacement replacement. So in the reverse shoulder replacement, uh, the, again, the ball part is uh, place with a screw on the uh, scapula and the, and the socket part is inserted in the humerus uh, with a long nail. So, yeah, there's a humerus stem, a uh, humeral stem, which is inside the humerus, then it has a plastic spacer on top of, then the glenoid sphere, the round, uh, and it is attached to the glenoid fixation device and there are compression screws, uh, which are attached to the uh, scapula. So once it's done, uh, it will look like this on the X-ray. So this is a post-operative X-ray of another patient. So as we see that due to traction, um, uh, there's a lot of movement in the joint and there's, uh, so there's radial nerve is at risk. So the, beside the radial nerve, the other nerve at risk are musculocutaneous nerve um, and ulnar nerve and median nerve. So median nerve setup is typical setup. We place the electrode on the wrist with the N or distal cathode proximal. Um, the radial nerve placed on the uh, extensor side. Um, so if you can see as a place and the picture, the white is the N cathode and the uh, black is the distal anode. So th that's the placement for the radial nerve for so stimulating for SSCP. 
Now that um, the interesting part is deltoid because we are the deltoid can be damaged um, and spared the few part of it. So deltoid has three head. One is the lateral head, then the posterior head, and the medial head. So we put electrode in all three heads because if you put only two electrode, we may not be monitoring all three heads at the same time and patient can have isolated injury and may have injury to the lateral head and not the posterior medial head and vice versa. So in these cases, we always monitor all three heads of the uh, uh, deltoid muscle. The other muscle we are do doing uh, pectoral uh, minor muscles in the chest, uh, tricep brachii, flexor carpi ulnaris, the first dorsal interosseus, which is between the thumb and uh, the first uh, index finger, and abductor pollis brevis in the hand. Now, the, um, the critical part, because uh, the cables have to run, so we'll try to make sure that we are losing the long uh, near electrodes, uh, 2.5 meters, not 1 meter, 1 1.5, they will be very short. So using a longer uh, electrode, 2.5 meter, and put a lot of tape. So tape is very important because uh, so the electrode don't come up, and while the surgeon is moving the hand or rotating the hand or arm, but the, the arm, it doesn't come out. So a lot of tape, but you have to be very careful with the patient, uh, with the delicate skin, especially patient who are on, on chronic uh, steroid, the, the steroid may cause uh, either uh, steroid cream or uh, oral or injection. So the steroid ca can cause um, the thin the skin thinning of the skin. And if you place a lot of these tapes, um, that can peel off the whole skin. So you have to be very careful and not use uh, the tagger, uh, the uh, silk tape, or maybe using just a uh, paper tape. So wide are taped to the back of the shoulder, keeping everything tucked away, away from the surgery. So every all the wires are running toward the shoulder, but toward on the back of the shoulder. So this is done to make sure um, the wires are not get traped, uh, trapped in the in the um, in the surgical feed. Uh, after everything is done, the tegadam is a huge tegadam is placed on the arm and wrapped with the with the bandit. Uh, if you can see in the picture, so the arm is exposed. Uh, the only arm is exposed the short for the, with the shoulder joint for full range of motion. So because when they place the uh, reverse uh, shoulder joint, uh, so the surgeon want to move on all direction to see make sure it is working. So arm is always exposed. It is fixed to the arm, but then it's also exposed to have a full motion. The surgery site is prepped and draped, so the arm is full. And then this is a setup uh, using any computer. So we use all the muscles on the left side, and we also use some muscles on the control level side for control. So motor evoke potential, again, uh, motor evoke potential on ipsilateral side, you'll see a lot of muscles. You have, on, like on this picture on the right side, we see, um, medial head, lateral head, posterior head of the deltoid, and then biceps and triceps and FCR, FTI, APB, FTI, and then also foot muscle. But on the left side, we have uh, just deltoid, biceps, uh, APB, ADM, and tibialis anterior leg muscle. So there are five muscles on the right, on the left side, which is a contralateral surgical, and more muscles on the ipsilateral side of surgical surgical. Another paper we published in the same um, application, which was um, radial nerve SSAP, uh, is it reliable or not? So when we're doing SSAP, so we, we added radial nerve SSAP, which is typically not done in spine cases. Most people, they don't do that. Uh, so it's always good to make a habit on practice on radial nerve in cases where you don't need to do that. So when you need to do that, so you know how to do that. So practice that, try to uh, record that. So on this picture, we can see on the left side, we have left median, the right median, and the left radial and the right medial, right radial. So we have, we have a very good uh, cortical, two cortical, transcortical, cervical, and uh, just peripheral responses. So here we can see one of the cases uh, in which patient, patient there was a change in the right median nerve. So surgeon was informed there's no EMG activity, only right median nerve SSP drop. So the surgeon removed the traction and repositioned the arm and the signal came back. Later, in another case, uh, we have changes in uh, radial nerve, right radial nerve SSP. So right radial nerve SSP was uh, almost drop in 90%. 
and little bit change on the right median nerve as well, but more significant on the right in the SSP, and these changes were reversed. Um, so this is another case where we can see the changes in the MEP. Uh, so the green one are the baseline and the purple one are the last recorded. Period. So there's a significant drop uh, during the, and this was in this patient, there was a blood loss. So there was a significant blood loss and uh, that caused the change.